Word, Module 2, Independent Challenge 1, Newsletter Document, 2-3, Newsletter. When you open it up, you'll notice that there are two comments that are visible in the document. There's a third one on the third page and another one on the end. And comments are, if, are helpful if you're sharing this document with someone else and you just wanted to um, give them highlights. Please add citations to this document. The second comment is please for, format the first three lines as a masthead for the newsletter. So you can put in comments. You can reply to the comment. We'll do. You can select another section and add your own comment and you'll find that in review and I'm going to add my own comment notice it has me as the author and I'll put change the font color and then click away to, to um, exit the comment and it even tells you when it was um, set a few seconds ago so if I wanted so I did the reply resolve meaning I took care of it and it's done you could reopen it if you want. So when you're working with comments, it's found on the, the review tab. And you can go to the next comment and the next comment and so forth to reply or leave alone. It keeps going through all the comments. Click into the document when you want to get out of the comment. So you could resolve, reply, and then you could delete them individually. But I'm going to delete all of the comments in the document so that they're all gone and it's no longer on the right-hand side. Control Home takes you to the top. I'm going to go into the title and I don't have to select it, just be in the title. And I'm going to choose Home and I want to choose this style called Title. And it changes change the color but it also changed the, the um, font size. Then I'll go to General Considerations and I'll select Heading 1. Now we'll apply a theme to this document. So choose design and then theme. And you can you know hover over each one. What it's basically doing is changing the font type and the font size. And some of them change the coloring. So if you'd like to pick anything that catches your eyes, go ahead. You can always change it later if you decide. They want the title of your, um, the, instead of two lines, select it, go back to home, and just decrease it until at least it fits on one line. So I needed to change it to 18 so that it did fit all on one line. I'm just going to go back to design for a moment, and I, I did choose the wisp, and you can see that it's selected. You could change it if you'd like, but if you want to, you can change the colors. So if you want to change the the color of the document. So we changed general considerations to heading one. So we're going to scroll down and select each of the blue and choose heading one. And you don't have to select it as long as you're on that line, you're fine. Heading one. And then continue until all the blues are heading one. If you wanted, you could select and hold control so you can do them at the same time. Now this one's a different color. Those are going to be um, heading two. So we'll finish this one with heading one and then determine and I'm going to use control arrange and each of these will be heading two. So now they do look similar. This is a little bit bolder, darker. This is size 13. So there's not much difference, 14 and 13. So if you want, control home. If you go into heading one and right click, you can choose modify. And you could make it larger if you wanted. You could change the font type if you wanted. And I'm going to change the color. Let's see, dark blue. And it's going to do, change because I'm doing the modify all of the heading ones. 
Maybe I want to make it a little bigger, so I'll go right back to make sure I'm on at least the first one. Right click, modify. You can see the font, the color I changed. I'm just going to increase the size to 16 and then OK. Now I'll do the same thing on heading 2. Be in any heading 2, right click, modify. I'll probably keep that purple, make it a little bit larger, and choose the same that I did for the first heading 1, and then OK, and it changes all of them. So I'm on G right now, and they want us to select the, the first three lines and put it in what's called a mast head, and that's another term for a newsletter head, something that would be used in newspapers, something that will attract a person's eye because it's large, it's bold, it's eye-catching. So I'm going to select the first line, and I'm going to go to Text Effects, and I'll select this one here. You can select anything you'd like and I'm going to definitely increase the size and you want it big enough but you wouldn't not so big that it goes on to another line now if you wanted to I think in the textbook they use the outline orange so if you wanted to go into outline you could choose a different color and it's giving the outline effect so it's up to you and if you wanted to uh, you could choose a shadow effect so it gives you that little shadow effect on it. You can see that it's like a little glow. Um, there's actually a glow if you wanted to do that. So it has a glow effect on it. Anything you'd like. And I usually don't do this one, but there is a reflection because sometimes it takes up too much space. So it's up to you, but I'm just going to leave it like that. Then for the next line, so click anywhere on the next line. And the textbook, all they did was put in a border top and then border bottom which is fine I'm going to change it to no borders but what I'm going to do is go to borders and shading and then I will choose uh, if you, you could go for uh, shadow effect but I'm going to go with box just because I want to set it up a certain way you have styles so maybe you'd like a double line and maybe you'd like to choose a color of the line and you um, you can make the line thicker and then what you would do is take off the left side and the right side but again if you want to change the style you can select and then make sure you check both of them there's more to choose from so maybe some of them they do not have um, a thickness choice so you'd have to stick with the size they gave you so it's up to you what you'd like to pick if you wanted to you could go into shading and you use a fill and usually the fill is a lighter color than the border and there you have it and then for the last line and, and again you can change the font if you'd like maybe I'll do something a little different for the date I think the, the book used the same and maybe a little bit bigger and change the font color so go with that theme and then the first three lines should be centered so you've definitely almost looks like a newsletter or press re press release where it stands out and catches your your um, attention so that's a masked head next we'll inc in include a header so click insert and then choose header and the book requested filigree but if you want to pick something else that's perfectly fine with, with with me so the document title I'll go ahead and fill that one in and then also put in your name for the author name and we'll put a page number at the bottom so I'll select footer and you can select any style that you'd like. Maybe you want to go with, we already have the author name. So where you have more choices, if, if you go to page number, and then I want it at the bottom, and there's many more choices. So I can choose something like this, and then also change the color of it so it matches my theme. And I think I like this one. What is this called? Oh, I like that ribbon. So I'm going to go with the ribbon. And then if I click the ribbon, I can change the color of it. 
So the um, shape outline, I'll go with the purple. And if I wanted to, I could have the fill also, so you could get real fancy. And then double click into the document and that'll leave the header. And you could always go back into it and, and change it if you like. So right now, if we were to view this in multiple pages, you have the header and footer on all of your pages, but it really shouldn't be on the first page. So choose insert and then we'll choose header and click edit. And then what you want to do is click different first page and it takes it off the first page both the header and the footer, but it remains on the other pages, so that's good. Close out of the header footer, and then if you want to go back to 100% so you can see everything clearly, um, 100%. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we want to find uh, the, the first, let's see, I'm going to do Control F and Behavior. There we go. At the end of this is where we're going to put in a footnote. So I just wanted to get to it real quick. So to insert a footnote, go to the end of the line, choose references, click insert footnote, and it's going to be at the bottom under the separator line. You're going to type a short sentence. So you go ahead and type the footnote. And what that's doing is it's telling the person that's reading it that there's more information about behavior and health of the traveler. And then when you scroll down at the bottom, you could read the added information. The next footnote is right above after public health, um, public health, and again go right after the period, and then it's insert footnote, and again it's numbering it for us. Great, there we have them numbered. Scroll down a little bit, and we have a couple more to do. Um, I'm just going to do it a little backwards. I'm going to go to sunscreen, and I'm right after sunscreen, and this should be footnote number three because it's doing it in order and I'm just going to type SPF 15 or greater and then the other one that I missed I did on purpose is before sunscreen it's tweezers and I just want to show you that if we do this one this one because it's before will be three and sunscreen will be four so insert footnote and there we go and sunscreen is now four Nice. So, so there should be four footnotes and now we'll do insert citations. So insert citations are actually something that you took um, information from a particular resource, whether it's a textbook, a journal, or a website, and they're set up a little bit differently. And at the end, you will have what's either called a bibliography or works cited stating where the information was um, borrowed from. So the very first one is on page one and this time your insertion place should be after the L but before the period and if you can close the navigation and then it's insert citation and then these are some of the citations that are already used and we're going to choose add a new source. So let me just cancel out of here. This exercise is set up a little different. The, re the um, citations are already created for us. So all we have to do is click the one that we want. And the very first one should be World Tourism Organization. And then you select it. So I'm just going to show you what they already typed for us. So if I go into Edit Source, this is where they already selected report, um, the author, the title, the year it was published, where, and so forth. So that was done for us, which is a nice feature. So the only thing that we do want to do is add a citation page. So click the down arrow and choose Edit Citation, and you'll type in 15. Not all of them have pages, and then OK. The next one is in that um, italic, so there's a quote that was taken. So again, go after the S, but before the period. And this one is, um, insert citation, World Health Organization. Perfect. And uh, no uh, page number on this one. And the next one, a source where the information was received from. So go down to source. And again, it's insert citation. And this one is Margaret Johnson. And this one does have a page number, so select it and click the arrow, edit citation, and this is page 50, and OK. 
And then the next one, I'm just going to look for it because I don't remember where it is. 